Hi everybody, welcome back to my 100 days of making comics. This is Hugh Did It. I'm Hugh Chapman. And we're going to pick up where we left off the other day. Um, we were in the process of uh, writing our premise and we had constructed most of it. We had a couple of things. There was something that I uh, couldn't find the word for, and it uh, occurred to me afterwards. It's the anti-climax. Uh, you know, obviously it's after the climax, and for some reason I had climax stuck in my head, and anti-climax wouldn't come out. So the the part I was talking about after the climax, which is the uh, a uh, falling action at the end of the story is called the anticlimax. So anyway, we were in the process of building up our premise and we're almost done. The only things we have left to do here were, um, let's switch over to the working screen. One second. And so what we have left done here to do is the what does our main character want? I can fill that in real quick. The main character was after uh, is wanting to meet people. And, you know, we'll have to fill this out a little bit more. Um, this in uh, writing parlance is called the vomit draft and a vomit draft is just spit everything out just get your idea out on page paper and then you know the the idea of writing is rewriting so just get it out and then the 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 easier it is to get to that step of rewriting and editing your page the better right you're going to be in a better position because really it's probably not until your fifth draft or sixth draft where it even starts to seem like something good so uh the main character is out meeting people that's obviously what he's after at this point um we could add in there that you know since he's a unicorn he's a do-gooder so he wants to do good That could be a little uh, foreshadowing of the ending. So uh, let's just quickly go over our premise so far was that, um, actually, let me rewind a little bit more. Uh, the 100 Days of Comics, if you're not familiar with it, is a challenge on uh, the internet to do a... Uh, 100 days of making a comic, at least 30 minutes a day. Um, the challenge being to get you to at least start making your comic. And by at least getting you to start, you'll probably do more than 30 minutes. So uh, if you want a fuller description of what that is, you can go back to my day one. Um, and so we, where we were at was uh, we started building our premise of our story, which is um, a uh, started out as a guy meets girl. Um, uh, guy starts uh, making out with girl. Girl eats guy cartoon. Um, but then uh, we decided to throw in a little twist at the end where it turns out that the guy is actually a unicorn since the theme of the the theme of the 100 Days of Comics is werewolves and unicorns. So we're telling a story about werewolves and unicorns in case this is your first story and you're not on that. So sorry if you missed that. Um, so uh, it's a, basically a, a unicorn meets werewolf story. And uh, we were going to have the girl as the werewolf because you kind of wouldn't suspect that. And the guy will be the unicorn, but he's going to turn out to be a real unicorn. And there's a little twist in that uh, unicorns actually um, 
in their mythology, one thing that doesn't usually get emphasized a lot is that unicorns uh, dispel all evil. So the fact that he turns out to be a real unicorn, he'll like, you know, stab her with the horn. Or maybe it doesn't even really have to turn out to be a real unicorn. Maybe we could figure out some way to make it momentarily magical. But anyway, he stabs her with the unicorn, the, the, the horn, and that cures her curse of being a werewolf. And then they live happily ever after. So that's the story. Um, we had been building this worksheet here that I have in my Evernote, um, which is a, a note application that I have for taking notes, but it does some word processing, processing stuff. And it's really great if you're like any kind of creative or anything, I highly recommend getting Evernote, pay for the yearly subscription. If you just put all of your stuff in there, it's organized. Even here's the other thing. If you're an artist and you're doing artwork, or even if you're a writer and you like just writing out your scripts, you can scan in and you can do that with your phone these days. Just take a picture of it. And Evernote will, um, uh, you know, read all the characters on your handwriting, you know, if it's not too terrible. And um, so then you can actually like index, you can search through all of your actually handwritten notes. And, you know, if you're doing sketchbooks or anything like that, put them in Evernote and all of your notes can is indexable. So it's it's kind of amazing that way. So I, I re recommend getting Evernote. So we were in Evernote and they have this template here that's a worksheet for building up a story premise. Um, they do have other templates. I looked at their script. They don't actually have a script template. I looked at their other story templates. So... What we're going to do is we're going to do the standard comic book script template, and we'll get to that in a bit. Um, we're just going to wrap this up quickly. So let's just go down through the worksheet as we worked through yesterday. The setting is a bar. The time is a full moon. Uh, it's in the evening, so obviously you're at a bar. They're meeting people. Um, the full moon is necessary so that the werewolf comes out at the end of the story. Um, the uh, we don't really have a name yet for um, the um, characters. I'm not sure we're really going to need them. This is a four-page short story, so we might not actually build that up. But um, anyway, the main character is a unicorn. He's a guy. He's uh, into like the furries thing and he's just come into the bar with a bunch of his furry friends who are in animal costumes and they're kind of like cartoon animal costumes and he's got his unicorn head on and he sits down to talk to this girl who's um our werewolf and she's sitting at the bar and she's got she's quite goth she's got like you know heavy black under her eyes she's wearing lots of black she kind of looks like a wolf maybe like just a little bit so we can kind of foreshadow that a touch you know she'll have like long black fingernails um so unbeknownst to the unicorn the lady he's chatting up is a werewolf and thinking that unbeknownst might be the title for this little short story um so what she wants is she just is in the bar you know either meeting fresh meat or what she really wants is to fall in love because she ends up killing every one of her lovers because of her curse as a werewolf and so she just can't find it um the uh so the situation is the furries go to the bar unicorn main character starts conversation with our antagonist while he has the unicorn head on 
they end up taking it outside into the alley. And at the appropriate time, the full moon rises up over the alley. And while they're in the throes of passion, she turns into a werewolf. And he is uh, in the most compromised position, shocked to find out he's got his hands on a werewolf. Um, the, uh, the Obviously, they both react, or uh, he reacts by surprise, terror. There's going to be some ensuing conversation that goes on. So... That's really where the story is going to be, is in that dialogue. And so we'll really be writing that in that part of the script. Um, what sustains the conflict is that there's a real interest in each other. So she's maybe the con the story is going to be about, you know, her sort of telling her, her telling this guy her short life story of her love life, which is basically that she ends up killing everybody guy she likes um and uh uh what are the stakes obviously the stakes are that um she uh you know the unicorn could uh uh it will probably lose his life to a werewolf a terrible ending and um of course, for the antagonist is that she doesn't know that he actually turns out to be a unicorn that will uh, uh, abolish her curse. So um, what choice the hero makes here? Um, that's really sort of a tough question. Um, Let's see the example here. So the, in the examples, they have uh, our um, um, notes from what it would be for A Christmas Carol. So um, the what the choice is, is if Scrooge helps the Cratchit family, he can save Tiny Tim's life and become a beloved man. If he refuses to help, Tiny Tim will die. And Scrooge will be despised after death. Okay. So let's see. The antagonist have has no choice, but the antagonist isn't the hero here. So let's see, main character makes choice to reveal his real unicorn. And tries to help her. It doesn't sound like I'm definitely not gonna win any Booker awards, but um, or uh, Eisner's, but <laughs> it'll, it'll do for now, and we'll try to expand it in our script. Um, so now really what the point of this, uh, the whole point of this, um, the whole point of this uh, worksheet here to um, create our uh, premise is that we want to, we want to um, write a, a two sentence synopsis of what our story is going to be. So the example that was given for this was Ebenezer Scrooge is a miserly London businessman with a hardened heart. When the ghost of his deceased partner haunts him on Christmas Eve, Scrooge must face the choices of his past and the grim future those choices will lead to unless he changes his ways.
So our story is going to be um, girl meets boy. In actually, this would be Girl Meets Unicorn in Bar. And turns into Werewolf. when they get passionate. Lucky for her, she's a, he's a real unicorn. So that's kind of like a good pitch the idea for the the two sentence thing is that what you're doing is coming up with a pitch for your script. So if we're not going to be selling this, I'm maybe I, I will have to sell it to the guy who puts the anthology together for the hundred pages, uh, the hundred days of comics. But um, at this point, we're just creating our comic. But if you were pitching this to somebody, that's what you would use, right? That's why you want to do this to get to there. So, let's just start another sheet here. This will be our uh, 100 Days of Comics Unicorns and Werewolves Edition. This will be our script. Okay. So um, let me just pull up my script link that I gave you. If you go back to the day one uh, video, there's a script there for. Um, the comic book script format by Alec Worley. And I'm just going to follow that so you guys get a good idea of what we're doing here. So uh, this is going to be Okay, so I'm going to be following the uh, link that I put in video one for um, the basic comic book format for writing scripts. So I'm going to be demonstrating that here for the rest of um, our time. How much time we got? We got about 15 minutes left, so that's good. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, you can get that link in the uh, first video in the comments. So the title we're thinking is going to be Unbeknownst. And um, that is going to be uh, Unicorns. Werewolves, 100 Days of Comics, 
Let's see. So you always want to put your email. And you would put your telephone number there. If you were sending this script out, I am not going to give you my telephone number. Sorry. You're welcome to email me. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. So, um, you would put, uh, actually, hang on, I did this wrong. So we take this out of here. It should actually go first. And you actually want to start out with your name, right? Um, you would have an episode here. Um, both of these should be bold. Uh, sorry, this should be all caps. Uh, you'll find that with writing comments, caps is used a lot. So what we want is page... We're going to have four pages. We know that for sure. So normally I would just go through each page. Um, and then go into the panels and write each panel for each page as I go along. But since I know this, these are going to be four pages, like I have a target of that, I'll just fill these in right away. Now, this is not normally what's in there, but um, being a comic book artist myself, this is what I like to have in the, uh, the script, which I think a lot of writers miss this. They don't know it. So here's a tip for writers. If you're writing for an artist, under each one of the page, um, after this, put in that it's a single page or a, a spread, right? Um, damn it, yeah. Um, and then for each page, also put in the number of panels that are in each page. Um, this is something I do when I when I get the script already. So when I read through it, I'll actually be, you know, noting whether that's a single page or it's a two page spread. Obviously, <laughs> it, it's quite simple, really, that the first page should usually be a single page, all the rest of them are going to be two page spreads. But sometimes that's not the case. And so, you know, maybe this isn't something you as a writer can do. Um, you know, and you should just leave it to the artist. But, but if you do know this already, if at some point in the story, you might be having a page that is supposed to be a page of ads for some reason, and maybe that's, a, you know, exactly where you want it. For instance, I'm putting out a book on my Patreon. My Patreon is patreon.com slash you did it. Please go over and check it out. Um, I'm putting out a book and obviously in that book somewhere in there at an appropriate place where it seems to make sense, I'm going to say thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. That might be one page. That might be two pages. It could be three pages, whatever. But what I want to do is work that out when I'm building my book, right? And so I'll put that in there. So if you know what those things are going to be already when you've written it, say you are a, a writer on Patreon and you're putting out a book, you know, throw those things in there for your artists to know. Because the worst thing is 
you go and lay out a whole bunch of things, you get finished artwork and, you know, it doesn't fit because it's in the wrong sequence, right? You know, everything about making a comic book as an artist, right, is you're, you're trying, you want to try to visually uh, cue the turning of each page, right? Interest to turn each page. And so you need to know where those page turns are, really. It's quite a bit different when you're on a two-page spread how you end that page for the first part of the two page spread and how you end the last one. So knowing whether it's a single page is useful and also um, how many panels are in the page. Um, so we don't know that yet, but I'm just gonna put panels so I can fill that out later. And then, What you can put here is first of two. Uh, in case you haven't figured it out yet, my profession is not typing. So, <laughs> um, okay, so there we go. So now what we're going to do is um, take our premise to our script. And this is the the real meat and potatoes of being a writer, right? Um so, uh, what do we have here? Actually, that's right. One. Okay, and uh, This is your establishing shot, right? What we're trying to do in our first page is introduce our characters. We have a three act story going on with the beginning, middle and end. Those are our three acts. The beginning is establish the characters and set up the conflict, right? Since our conflict is going to come in really page uh, two, when uh, they're already outside and the moon comes up, what would be a good page turning event would be to um, have them heading outside would that be and that might be curious to page the to turn the page so that you, you, you kind of feel like you know there's going to be something you want to see happening in the next page so yeah so they're going to have a conversation then they're going to go outside right and we'll sort of start them kissing maybe um so that is going to make you want to turn the page and see what happens, right? Because you know you've got three more pages left and they're already kissing. So your brain starts to think, I want to see what's going to happen next. Um, so really the inciting incident, though, is the full moon coming up. So that isn't going to be until on page two. So first thing we want to do on the first page, our focus is 
start building the characters, right? So establishing shot. This is going to be in a bar. Um, Um, you know what? Maybe at the bar, it'll be furry night. It's actually furry night at the bar. We'll have a little sign that will establish it. Okay? This is why you do this stuff, right? It's, this is how you work out your ideas. They pop in as you're working it out. Who knows? That might live. It might not. It might get thrown out. But that's a pretty good idea, actually. Instead of it, them coming from a convention, they're actually going to a furry night. And actually... Uh, it could be interesting. It might be kind of interesting, actually, to have her not be in a furry costume and be the only one not in a furry costume. That could be a grounds for conversation. Um, Yeah, and maybe she has like a, um, you know, her. she came by, she dropped in, she's a stranger, she dropped in because she has an interest in animals. <laughs> Being a wolf. She could say something wolfy around that. Um, how are we doing here? Oh my goodness, we're almost out of time. Wow. Okay, um, let's see if we can get a little dialogue going here first. A stumbling shot in a bar. It's furry night at the local bar. As the signs attest. A man with a unicorn head on. It's head unicorn costume head only. Um, is sitting next to a woman at the bar. Um, we will call him Unicorn.
we maybe we'll have some narration in this um, at some point, but I'm going to leave that out for right now. It's a possibility for later. Um, and then let's see here. Tab over a little bit. Uh, so he's going to say, do you come here often? Right, and um, she Gives him a wry, funny, perhaps sideways glance. With a smirk slash a smile. Um, then she's going to reply, we'll write her reply into the next panel. Panel two. Um, so for her, I'm going to call her strange woman at this point. It's not pulled. Or let's just call her woman one. What, what the heck? Doesn't need to be anything more than that right now. But what we can do is put werewolf in here just to make it a little more understood. Who her character is. Okay, so we need to tab this out more. So we line up with that. And then um, she says, no. Do you? And then... And then he can say that the uh, the costume didn't give it away, <laughs> and uh, we'll end it there because that's thirty minutes so far. So. Let's see, just review what we got so far. We've gone from our premise to writing our script, and I've given you some writing sample of how to write your script correctly in the right format. So you've got the uh, titles, the pages, the panel announcements, whether they're bold, uh, uppercase, lowercase, et cetera, et cetera. You just keep doing that. Um, so far, the only thing that's missing here, we only have two panels. This would say two panels. It's probably going to be something like five panels. Um, which is what you should probably want to do. Um, 
something like five. I mean, there's no limit. I mean, I've seen pages that have 22 panels on them, literally. So there's there's all kinds of leeway there, but average is as a good rule of thumb is five panels a page, five or six. Um, let's see. Uh, if you liked this video, please hit the like button down below. Click subscribe if you want to keep uh, following the rest of this 100 Days of Comics. Um, what I'm doing is uh, 30 minutes every day for 100 days. I'm only going to do exactly the 30 minutes so that you get a exact representation of the amount you can accomplish if you just put in 30 minutes in that 100 days. Um, thanks for watching. I uh, really appreciate you guys. Come and visit me over on my Patreon page, which is uh, Hugh Did It, uh, patreon.com slash Hugh Did It. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.